Good Wednesday morning, friends, or afternoon, or evening, or whenever you may happen to join, for those that I may not know, I'm Reverend Jennifer Finley, our Momentum and Discipleship Pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Kirksville, and this is our weekly time in the middle of the week to pause together to take a deep breath, to wonder together about how and where God is showing up in our lives and in our world, where and how we are seeing God, how God is being made tangible to us. I've shared before that I've come to treasure this time with you to share together and also the practice, the spiritual practice of asking myself this question each and every week. So I am grateful to be doing this together with you once again on this November 1st as our seasons are shifting and changing. As I answered that question for myself this week, where have you seen God? I was thinking about our Sunday morning worship for those that join us online or here in the building you know that we finished a worship series focused on community. And uh, as part of our response to that, for those who were in the building, we invited folks to pick up a piece of ribbon. There are multiple different colors of blue. To pick up a piece of ribbon and consider the waters, the ways in which God moves streams of water together ebbing and flowing together the way God creates change, transformation of love in our world. And then we did a very tangible thing. We had folks pick up those ribbons and bring them forward and place them here on the pitcher and basin that we often use as our baptismal font here at First UMC. And we had folks put them there representing all the ways in which our streams of community flow in and out of each other, how God works transformation through that. It was a very tangible, very simple thing. And I was sitting, of course, up here on the chancel, and I couldn't really see a whole lot. But towards the end on Sunday morning, I caught one of our littlest, one of our youngest, disciples coming up and was lifted up by a parent to be able to put their ribbon here. And I don't know, that moment caught me. God met me in that moment, in that simple act of a child being able to offer themselves as they do to God to our community, a reminder that people of all ages are part of our community. And it reminded me of all the times in my own life when uh, my dad usually would be the one that would hold me up to be able to do something, to get a drink of water at a water fountain, or to be able to participate in something like this, the hands of love that lifts you up and so that you can participate. I don't know, it was a simple, very tangible moment where I was reminded about how God is present with us in and through the diversity in our faith community. It was a holy moment and a completely ordinary one at the exact same time. And that reminds me that that's a lot of our lives, right? Completely ordinary moments that are also holy as well. Which leads me into where we find ourselves today on November 1st. A completely ordinary day as the calendars change, and yet also a holy day. We call it All Saints, and we'll be celebrating All Saints Sunday this next Sunday. But today, today we recognize and remember those who have gone before us, those in our lives who have woven in and out, those whose love have been a part of God's transforming love in our lives. All Saints is this lovely thin space on the calendar 
a place where we acknowledge our grief, but also where we celebrate the ways in which the love of people have woven in and through and led us to each other and led us to God. All Saints is one of my favorite times of year, I think, probably because, probably because it is such a holy thing in the midst of very ordinary things. And so tonight you are invited, if you are here in Kirksville, to join us for a very ordinary time and also a holy time as we celebrate All Saints together with a simple soup meal down in our fellowship hall. We'll be starting at six o'clock. Um, a simple time of conversation and soup. And then we're gonna make something for All Saints. I've already made mine. You can see it's just a simple bottle with sand in it, colored sand. And as I poured that sand in, I recalled the people in my life who have gone before me, whose lives have impacted mine, and who has who have woven in and out. And even, even as I moved it in here for this, I'm realizing the sands have shifted a little bit, and actually I kind of love that. Tonight, I'll put a tag on here with the names of folks that I'm remembering. My tag will probably say Doris and Irene and others folks whose lives have been a part of mine in some way, shape, or form. And then these that are made tonight along with others will be part of our altar on Sunday morning as we celebrate All Saints as a community of faith. We'll have ones that are honoring folks in our own faith community who have passed on in this last year since last All Saints. So we invite you to come tonight. And if you are not able to make it, but would like a bottle with names attached, if you would send us a message, email or on this thread, comment a name that you'd like represented and we'll make sure that is, it is on the altar for Sunday morning. And then these, these beautiful ribbons of community, the river of life, will be woven in and through and in and out throughout those bottles. Friends, we are, we are God's beloved community and God has met me in these very tangible, very ordinary ways of recognizing that this week. And on this holy, ordinary All Saints Day, that I'd offer two poems, two sonnets that came to mind. These are from a book called Sounding the Seasons there. It was a book gifted to me by dear friends and I come back to it and when I pick it up, I am reminded of their friendship and their connection and the ways that they have impacted my life. The Gathered Glories. Though Satan breaks our dark glass into shards, each shard still shines with Christ's reflected light. It glances from the eyes, kindles the words of all his unknown saints. The dark is bright with quiet lives and steady lights undimmed, the witness of the ones we shunned and shamed. Plain in our sight and far beyond our seeing, he weaves their thread into the web of being. They stand beside us even as we grieve, the lone and left behind whom no one claimed, unnumbered multitudes he lifts above the shadow of the gibbet and the grave, the triumph where all saints are known and named, the gathered glories of his wounded love. The phrase that caught me and has stayed with me, with quiet lives and steady lights undimmed, the witness the ones we shunned and shamed, there's acknowledgement there, but I love this. Plain in our sight and far beyond our seeing, God weaves their threads into the web of being. God weaves our threads into the web of being, friends. And then this. Now, you need to know the author of this poem is British, so some of the turns of phrase are a little bit different than ours. A last beatitude. 
And blessed are the ones we overlook, the faithful servers of the coffee rota, the ones who hold no candle, bell, or book, but keep the books and tally up the quota, the gentle souls who come to do the flowers, the quiet ones who organize the fete, church sitters who give up their weekday hours, doorkeepers who may open heaven's gate. God knows the depths that often go unspoken amongst the shy, the quiet, and the kind, or the slow healing of a heart long broken, placing each flower so for a year's mind. Invisible on earth without a voice, in heaven their angels glory and rejoice. Friends, I know many of you, many of you are the ones who quietly serve in all kinds of ways, inside and outside our faith community, inside and outside the church. And I give you thanks. I give thanks for that. I give you thanks for lives weave in and out of each other. I am reminded of the ways in which God, God weaves us together. I hope you can join us tonight in person. And if not, I hope you can join us online or in person for All Saints Worship on Sunday morning. Go in peace.